In this video we're going to be building a SaaS website and framework using our Equinox template. So this will be a full walkthrough. I'll show you how to change everything you see on this page, how to change the text, the images, um, the logos, the branding, the colors and everything. Uh, this is a great choice for any SaaS business. The template features a lot of sections and really anything you might need to create an effective marketing website. Um, so if you would like to follow along, you can grab a copy with the link in the description. We also have a free demo of the template that you can quickly download uh, and see if this will work for you or not. It features only a few sections, but it's great option just to see how this will look with your brand. Uh, but with that out of the way, we can get started with customizing. Uh, first, once you purchase the template, you will uh, receive a purchase confirmation email where you will find a link to the template itself and also to the Figma file. Now, we will need both of these in order to effectively customize this website. So once you open this page, simply, simply click copy project and now we'll wait for it to load up. Okay, now that we're in Framer, we can get started with customizing. Now, quick note, if you have never used Framer before, I would highly recommend for you to check out our Framer Basics video. I'll leave a link to it in the description and there I will walk you through all of the basics like how to move around, how to change the text, how to you know use the interface, what settings we have, etc, etc. So again, if you're new, I would highly recommend for you to check that out first. Uh, but now let's get started with actually customizing the Equinox template. Okay, so the first thing that we will do is we will customize the colors. So to do that, we will have to go to the Assets tab. And then if we scroll down, we will see the color styles. Here we have dark, dark elevated accent, etc., etc. So you can change all of these to fit your brand. And let's say we're using something like a red color for our brand. I would simply change the color here. And then as you can see, we already have quite a few elements changed on the page with our new brand color. A lot of the things do not change because they're images, for example, this here or these or the hero image, they will not change with changing the, um, the accent color because we have to edit those in Figma. So to do that, simply click on the Figma link and then here on the little arrow, we will first have to duplicate this file. So I'll just click that and we'll duplicate it. Okay, so now that we have a copy of the Figma file, we can actually edit it. And how do we actually change the colors of the, this background image? It's very simple. We have to double click on uh, the image itself on the right side. And here we have a layer titled uh, color. We have this same thing for all of the other um, layers as well. They all have a color layer and simply once you have selected this color layer, we need to get our accent color. So copy it from here and then we paste it here right into the Figma fill. And just like that, we have our new color applied. And then all we have to do is just click export and replace our image. If we go back to Framer and if we go to the layers tab and we select the hero layer, we will see the image right here. We simply need to hover over it and pick the image we just exported. And just like that, we have our new brand color inserted into the image. You can repeat the same process for all of the other elements on this page. Now, of course, if you're building your own SaaS business, I assume you will have your own screenshots. So make sure you export them in, pro in the appropriate colors as well. So everything matches and is co coherent. Um, one important note, if you do change the accent color, I would also recommend to change the dark elevated and dark colors because they do have a blue hue. And with this red theme, this might not be the best option. So what I would do is just copy this accent color, make this go like in the dark uh, space and then dark elevated, paste this color, make this a bit lighter. And now uh, we have updated our dark colors as well. I will do that for all of the layers. Um, there's still some things that need to be tweaked, but we will uh, see those once we get to them. But this is the basics of changing the colors. The next thing that we can customize is the fonts. Now, a lot of the headings use two fonts. So we use Satoshi and Playfair Display for the fonts. Um, so by changing the assets uh, text styles, you will not um, change all of the text layers because once if we have two different fonts in one single sentence 
then now we cannot apply a style but if we apply the heading one here you will see that it removes the highlighted um, word with the different font if that's something you would like then you can simply go ahead and change all of these to the heading style so this way you can easily manage them through here and once we have done that if i change the font on the heading one let's say we do something crazy like this as you can see with just this click we now have a new font but if you like this um, style where we have two different fonts uh, you can still change them simply select the part you want to change and then pick the font uh, that you want to change it with from here and just like that we can uh, change that let's also uh, do this so um, what font did we pick here we did pick Serena, so let's do that and see how this combination looks. So if we pick Serena, and yeah, so it doesn't look good, but that's how you do it. Okay, so next up uh, we have navigation and branding. Um, so to edit the navigation, we need to double click uh, the top bar. Once we do that, um, let's just first change the logo. To change it is very simple. Double click it and then just pick your logo from right here. Let's say that this is our logo. Now you might need to resize it a little bit. So simply unlock the size property here and then I'll just resize it so it fits nicely in that rectangle. And I think this looks good enough. Now, if you want to add more links to the navigation, what you will have to do is simply select one of the links and click Command or Control D to duplicate it. And then you can double click, change the text, and then change the link from here as well. Um, if you want to remove a link, simply select it and click Delete on your keyboard. And if you want to change them, again, double click or just click once, change the link here. And um, you should be able to do that after watching our Framework Basics video. Um, so now that we have our branding and navigation changed, we will talk about changing the client uh, logos. So you can simply double click and then how this works, it's basically a ticker. So this component infinitely spins around our logos and they are connected to this component you know from outside of the canvas so what we have to do is we have to drag and drop our logos onto the canvas and i will do that now and see and show you how it's done so i just dragged uh, this logo again and if you drag it in chances are it will be very big or very small so simply position it next to the already existing logos and then resize it so it fits nicely with them so something like that and what we have to do now is just select the uh, ticker component and with the three dots we have to connect it and just like that we have our new logo right here if you want to delete a logo simply select the layer and click delete on your keyboard and this will uh, remove it so that's it pretty simple uh, with the client logos now one thing that you might notice is that this get started button has a slight inner shadow and if you double click it you will see uh, you will be able to edit it and what we have to do is we have to select this primary um, variant and then for the border we're gonna pick our new accent color make it 12% in the shadow pick our accent color and make it 36% and now it has this little red hue instead of the blue one and it's it will be a lot more on brand same thing with the pressed variant just pick the accent and make it slightly darker and now our button uh, should look pretty nice if we preview it so just like that. Okay, next thing we have is uh, this section where we have three boxes and three different icons. The first thing that I will cover is changing the what we just did actually with the button. These boxes also do have a border that has to be changed. So here I will pick our color, make it 25%. And then for the shadow, again, pick the accent, make it 36% or maybe even 24 because this is a bit of a stronger color or 12 even and now that we've done that we need, we can select it and click option command and c or control alt and c to copy the style and then con uh, command <laughs> option and v to paste the style while selecting the other two boxes and now they're all in this red branding and then if you want to change the icons uh, these are phosphor icons so you can google phosphor icons and then you can explore them and then what you have to do is simply go here and let's say you want to use the data icon you can simply write data in the name of the icon and it will appear right here um, so that's that the next thing that we uh, will cover is actually 
these little boxes. Now, of course, here you would insert your own screenshot from your um, software, but for the backgrounds uh, to change the color, it's actually the exact same process as the hero section. Simply select the color layer here, paste your red um, color, and then simply export that. So export and then replace uh, the card layer. Go down and then here you'll see the dark head. Pick our new image and then change the border as well. So make this 25 and make this 12 and we're good to go. So same procedure for the three, uh, the two other ones and you should be good to go. So after that, these sections, very simple, same thing. You just have to edit the image to make it fit. And now for the testimonials, we do have a little work to do here. So as you can see, these cards still do have this bluish hue. So what we can do is we can go back and copy the style of this box and uh, with the same command uh, option in C and then select the card, command option in V. And then here we will just change the, the distribute from um, space between to start and the gap, we will make it 40. And uh, this is pretty good. Now we'll again copy the style and paste it to the other three cards. And now they all look nice and red. Um, now, if you want to add more testimonials, you can simply duplicate them. So select one of the testimonial card layers, hold down option, drag it away and just copy it next to the other ones. Then you can go in, change the text, change the image. And then all you have to do is select one of the tickers and connect it just like that. And our new testimonial will be live. Okay, so next we have the CTA section. Now the procedure here is exactly the same for the background, so I won't cover that. And then for the dashboard, you can simply pick your own dashboard. Now it might be different height, so what you might have to do is actually set the fill to top center instead of center. And then if it's still messed up, you need to unlock the width and height property and then resize it to what you want it to look like and then lock it back in so it's the same proportions on all screens. Next, we have the pricing. Now the pricing is a component, so we'll have to double click to edit it. And then here, again, same procedure with the cards, you will have to change the border, the shadow to make it all on brand. Same thing with this little switch here, we simply, you know, insert your new colors and uh, you should be good to go. Uh, now, if you wanna change the text, again, double click, super easy. If you wanna add more features, simply select the main feature stack. So this one right here, and then command D to duplicate it, and this will duplicate it, and you can go in and change uh, the text itself. Uh, just when you're making changes, make sure to also check the mobile monthly and mobile yearly to make sure that they are the same as the desktop versions because sometimes uh, the component might not propagate to all of the versions and you might have to do some manual work to fix it. But yeah, this pretty much covers the pricing. Then we have FAQ. Now FAQ, uh, you need to double click it again. And if you wanna uh, add more questions, simply select one of them and click Command or Control D to duplicate it and then change the question and answer from here and you should be good to go. If you wanna change the styling of the question itself, then double click it. And then from here, you can customize it to whatever you want. But that basically covers the questions. And of course, if you wanna remove a question, simply select it and delete it with your keyboard. And finally, we have the footer, which again is a component, so you have to double click it. Background image, same procedure as um, what we covered already, is just this desktop uh, layer instead of the container. The container is actually, um, you know, just a container. <laughs> so to make sure that it's max width is 1200. Uh, but yeah, so this is the same exact process as in the navigation. If you wanna add more links, you can duplicate, you can edit the link. Um, you can change your logo here. You can insert your uh, Facebook link. Just make sure that you insert it not in the link text or the icon wrapper, but on the layer that holds uh, this whole link. You will recognize it by this little icon. So select this and then insert your link right here. Um, and yeah, that pretty much covers the uh, footer part. Uh, next, we have the roadmap page, which has, um, you know, again, a background image that you can easily replace following this tutorial. But we also have these little features that you can 
um, you know, update with your users. So if you want to add more of these, you can simply expand the layers and select the single item block. And then with command D, you can duplicate it and then you can go in and change the text and change, you know, basically everything. And if you want to remove something, simply uh, select the item layer and click delete and you can remove it. And then also you can, once you publish a feature, you can, for example, copy this pre-header and then paste it right here you know, bring it up and delete this in progress. And then this way you will let your users know that this is already published. Okay, so that's the roadmap. Now we have a kind of a complex page, which is the pricing page. Um, this pricing page does come with this big table and this table might be slightly tricky to edit, but um, I will try to, you know, help you with that as well. Um, so yeah, we have uh, basically the structure is as follows. We have this big stack that holds everything. And then for first column is um, the description. Second is for the basic and third one is for the pro plan. Um, so what you have to do is simply go in, you know, edit the text. If for example, this basic plan does not have this feature, but a pro does, you can um, select the check mark and delete it. If you want to delete some of the columns, you will have to do it manually. So select it right here, click delete, then select right here, delete, here, delete, and then that's how you remove it. If you want to add an additional one, then you would have to select it and duplicate it and same thing. So that's how you manage that. And then, um, yeah, that pretty much covers it. Just one thing, um, if for example, here in the mobile version, this is one row, you will see that the gap here is way bigger. So how you uh, fix this is by simply setting a height of 60 to this single row um, box. So height 60 and this fixes it, and now it's even. Um, so you might have to play around with it quite a bit to get it right, but if you need any assistance, you can get in touch with me on our website and I'll try to help you. Okay, so that's for the pricing footer. Um, then we have connecting the contact form. So if you go to the contact page, it will contact form and to connect it to your email, what you have to do is select the form here and then send to simply add your email. And then from here, you can you know edit the recipient, um, the name of who sent you this email, the subject and the body text. And then you can also, if you, if for example, you build a thank you page, you can redirect this form after it's submitted to that thank you page. We don't have this, so we will not use any redirection here. But yeah, that's how you connect the uh, contact form. Now, next up, we have managing the blog. So this template does come with a blog. And uh, the way it's managed, you can customize you can customize it visually right here on the canvas. For example, change the image, change the background here to fit your new red branding. But the actual content pieces are edited through the CMS and we will cover this in just a second. But also if you expand this blog page, you will see we also have the single blog page here. So don't forget to customize the visuals here as well so that it fits your brand. And now once you're ready to edit the existing blog articles, you can simply go to the CMS, click it, and then j just fill out all of these fields and you should be good to go. If you wanna add a new item, click on new item, fill out everything add your content and you should be, you know, good to go. Uh, now one thing by selecting, so let's say this is headline and description, by selecting something, you can make it either a heading. So heading one is the title. So I wouldn't put a H1 on the block here, start from H2 and then uh, use the following as you wish. Um, but yeah, so that's how you turn something to a heading. You can also bold things, you can make them into bullet points. You can also add, make it a quote block. Um, you can add an image, for example, by clicking this and picking an image, you can add a video as well. So it's very flexible and you can create really good articles here that will uh, rank your website on Google. <laughs> Sorry for the voice crack. Um, okay, next up we have a privacy policy in terms and conditions. So these are very basic uh, policies that we have copied from Google. I mean, these are like very bare bones templates. So I would suggest to uh, create your own and insert them here because these are not, you know, legit. So 
simply insert your own privacy policies here and you should be good to go. And then 404, you can simply customize the background image. But what a 404 does is if, for example, somebody lands on a page that doesn't exist on your website, it redirects them back to the homepage. So this way we don't lose the user, but we kind of try to re-engage them with the homepage. And this pretty much covers the Equinox tutorial. Now there's also some other things that you can do like changing the site title by going to the site settings and adding uh, social images and stuff like that and domains. But I also covered these in the Framework Basics tutorial. So if you need help, you can reference it to there. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you and I will see you in the next video.